One year ago this week, President Biden signed the PACT Act, fundamentally changing how veterans could receive disability compensation for war-related illnesses. Before that, they had to prove their sickness was related to military service, an often impossible bar. Under the PACT Act, veterans have to prove deployment to one of the included countries, like Iraq or Afghanistan and others. They also must suffer from one of 23 listed medical conditions, such as brain cancer, asthma, or chronic bronchitis. More than 801,000 veterans and their survivors have filed claims since the act was signed. The VA posts online data for one condition covered by the new law, asthma. There were 36,000 claims for asthma. Half were approved and half were denied. So overall, how is the implementation of this act proceeding? Dennis McDonough is the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, and he joins me now. Welcome back to the News Hour. Thanks for having me. So let's start with that question. How is the implementation going overall? Well, look, I mean, uh, I think we're out of the gate strong, but so far we're doing uh, a lot of outreach. In fact, we've just conducted, or we are conducting the biggest outreach campaign in the history of VA, VA so that veterans, no matter where they are, know what they qualify for and they come in and file a claim to try to make sure that we get them everything that they've earned. So uh, that 800,000 number mm -hmm. uh, feels uh, decent. But we have a long way to go, and we're going to stay on top of this until every veteran knows what's available to him or her, files a claim, then we fulfill that claim for them. Um, and uh, I think we're out of the gate strong, but we got a long way to go, and we're not going to let up. Where do you think that number could end up? Well, look, I mean, the numbers, let's just take one half of the law, uh, the uh, first half of the law addresses Vietnam vets, but let's set that aside for a second. The other half of the law covers anybody who was in Central Command uh, for the 30 years of war there, starting in 1991 in Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, going all the way through to the summer of 2021 uh, in when uh, the activities in Afghanistan ceased. Mm -hmm. So that's 30 years of war. We think there's probably 4 million veterans who qualify having been in that geography. So uh, we want to make sure that everybody knows uh, that they have an opportunity, gets that claim filed, and we get to work for them. So you mentioned the one condition you've listed, uh, claims filed and rejections yes. online. We've requested from the DA, from the VA rather, data on claims and denials for the, all of the 23 medical yes. conditions. We were told we have to file a Freedom of Information Act to receive that information. Do you have that data? Are you tracking I don't. That? I don't have that information at my uh, fingertips. I was really gratified to see that you cited our data in your lead-in. Uh, we made a decision early in this process that we'd put out the data we have every two weeks mm -hmm. so that you uh, and then obviously veterans and their families, Congress, everybody can see exactly what we're doing. So but for the other medical conditions as well? Again, we have what we've, we've published what we have. If, if you, you have, you all have a request for it, we'll go to work on it. Uh, but what we're working through right now is actually getting those claims filed, processing those claims and getting the benefits paid. Uh, to our veterans. Last year, I know you and I spoke about one particular lung condition that was very hard, still very hard to diagnose. I just want to play a clip from that exchange we had sure. last year in September. Sure. There's a condition called constrictive bronchiolitis, which mm -hmm. basically destroys the, the small airways. There's no treatment. There's no cure. Right. Under the metrics that the VA currently uses, you have to establish what's called a disability rating, and that then can help grant some benefits right. to the veterans. People who have this do not qualify for anything. They have to appeal to get something. And I believe back in, Jan in July, you said you were looking into this. Yeah. So have you closed the loophole? So we've been working this issue of constrictive bronchiolitis. One of the issues is... Uh, the test to prove existence of chronic constrictive bronchiolitis is actually as intrusive in many cases as the disease itself. Right. And so uh, well, I don't have news on that yet. So, Mr. Secretary, many months later, now almost a year later, have mm -hmm. you been able to close that loophole? Uh, we don't have specific process yet established on how to test for constrictive bronchiolitis, uh, but a lot of times it manifests in other challenges too. Those are conditions that we have very straightforward tests for, uh, so asthma being one of them. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have news for you on that at the moment, but we'll stay on top of it. This is one of the things that our troopers really wrestle with. Um, it's something that we need a uh, straightforward definition for and an even more straightforward test so that we can establish the connection or establish the existence of the condition uh, so that people who are in that geography and have that condition 
get their benefits. There have been some questions, though, about the tests, the kind of tests, pulmonary function tests and the like that are used for things like asthma and emphysema yes. don't necessarily work Correct. for this particular Correct. illness. And, and I just I want to play for you another bite. We, we spoke with a doctor who's been treating a number of these patients. Mm -hmm. His name is Robert Miller. He's at Vanderbilt Medical Center. He says he has seen 300 patients with constrictive bronchiolitis since the U.S. invasion of Iraq. He says none of them so far, none of them have benefited from the PACT Act. This is just a little bit of what he had to say. Sure. When it comes to the respiratory patients that I take care of, it has not come through in a way that has helped as many as I would have liked. The PACT Act says that constrictive bronchiolitis and other respiratory disorders should be considered presumptive diagnoses. These presumptive diagnoses for respiratory disease are not getting rated uh, for disability. The VA actually hasn't created a code for disability for constrictive bronchiolitis. So you've said there's not a test, there's not a code that's been created for it. Mm -hmm. We spoke about it last year and you said you were working on it. I guess yeah. for the hundreds of those veterans who suffer from this, totally. when can they access those benefits? Look, I mean, uh, it's really hard for me to know. Uh, I, uh, I'm really glad we'll make sure that we track down the doctor that you're working with there and make sure that we understand uh, what that uh, timeline is for those 300. I don't know if those 300 since the president signed the, the law into uh, signed the bill into law a year ago. But we'll get to the bottom of it and we'll figure it out. I think what we've been trying to say to veterans is we want you in our care. Mm -hmm. We want you to get the benefits that you have earned and so richly deserve. That's what this outreach campaign has been about. Um, believe me, nobody's more frustrated about uh, how we um, can diagnose, make some of these diagnoses than I am. Um, but we'll keep working at it. There are recommendations, though, right? There was a working group that's been focusing yes. just on this issue for the VA. They, they put forward recommendations Correct. last September. Yep. I believe, I don't think those have been adopted. Those are being worked through at a, our, what's called our War-Related Injury, Injury and Illness Center uh, of Excellence, which is up at uh, East Orange, New Jersey, in our VA center there. Uh, this is some of the best science that we have on these conditions. I. I guess I want to just underscore to you, Amna, yeah. I'm not happy about where this stands. I want to make sure every veteran gets the care and the benefits that they've earned. So help and us no understand why it's taking so long. Uh, look, because we're, we're working through the science to get to it. And that's that. And I, let's be clear, that's on one condition, constrictive bronchiolitis, that we're, we're working through. Um, 800,000 claims, about 450,000 of them have now been completed. We're granting. Uh, in those 450,000 at about 80%, I think the last number I saw is 78.6%. Mm -hmm. um, that's substantially higher, uh, and that's the importance and the strength of the new law, which establishes a presumption of connection. So we just need the existence of the condition and the fact of presence in central command. Those two things uh, make sure that we get the rating get the benefits and get the care. We look forward to keeping in touch with you about this issue. Before I let you go, I need to ask you about another issue we've spoken about previously, which was the decision the VA made to provide abortion services and counseling um, in cases of incest, rape, or when the life of the woman was at risk. Life or health. Life or health, uh, thank you. Uh, do you know how many people have accessed those services? I think at the most recent numbers I've, saw, I've seen are in the 50 range. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going back to um, the period uh, when we started providing these services in September. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know that uh, that's the most recent number. That's the number that, uh, I, that um, sticks out to me as the, being the one we have most recently provided to Congress. I appreciate you providing that to us today. Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Dennis McDonough, always good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much.